they're not being open, uh, they're using our money, and I think it's quite justified if people break the law to stop these genetic experiments. I guess what you have to do is examine your own conscience and say, am I comfortable to withstand the judgment of history in 20 years time over the things that we've done right now? The movement to oppose GE is a global movement working largely through the internet and on the ground through the, through the direct action uh, and grassroots movements around the world. And it's ordinary people who've taken on the might of some of the biggest corporations in the world, as well as the might of their own governments, and are actually rolling it back. Until recently, most New Zealanders were blissfully unaware of genetic engineering or GE. Nowadays, few have failed to stop and ponder the issue. An intense public debate and political drama has been spawned by the birth of these mutant calves. Cloned calves that carry human genes. The drama began with another mysterious birth in Scotland. <laughs> When Dolly the Cloned Sheep was first introduced to the media at Edinburgh's Roslyn Institute, her creator Ian Wilmot was already well advanced with his plans to create genetically modified cloned animals. Since then, biotech companies have been delving into the genetic unknown with experiments mixing human and animal DNA. They want to demonstrate to the world that crossing the species barrier is a good step forward, and New Zealand is at the heart of their plans. Dolly opened the floodgates in terms of you know, what potential opportunities there were for, for science, uh, uh, what potential applications there were for agriculture and medicine, and the enormous controversy of you know, what was uh, appropriate, where were the boundaries, you know, what was the uh, potential for abuse in humans. So it certainly broadened our uh, perspectives, you know, out of the laboratory, into the wider community, into uh, very much a social context. David Wells is a graduate of Roslyn and one of Ian Wilmot's more famous protégés. He's also the architect of New Zealand's notorious mutant cows. AgResearch is New Zealand's Agricultural Research Institute, with a network of laboratories involved in top-secret genetic engineering research but Dr. Wells is worried that the public controversy over GE is hindering his progress. Clearly there's uh, been you know, more concerned, uh, you know, eared towards uh, genetic engineering, and uh, you know, certainly that has um, uh, stymied our ability to put in place you know, the research that we have wanted. Um, and you know, that is you know, undoubtedly affecting uh, our ability you know, to do science and compete with some North American groups. This is the Ag Research facility which has been dubbed Frankenstein's Farm. The location where David Wells is already creating what are known as genetically modified organisms, or GMOs. The Ag Research program has managed to cheat nature and create in a few years what could never be achieved in millions of years of evolution, by modifying the genetic material of an animal and then cloning it. In an attempt to treat neurological disorders like multiple sclerosis, scientists copy a human gene called the MBP gene and insert that into the cell of a Frisian cow. This gene enables the human body to manufacture myelin, the material surrounding nerve cells which is lacking in sufferers of multiple sclerosis. 
The cow cell with its added human gene is then inserted into an unfertilized cow egg which has had all of its genetic material removed. With a little help from scientists, that cloned and genetically modified egg becomes an embryo. The resulting transgenic calf should produce milk which contains human myelin protein, the object of the exercise in the first place. I feel very comfortable with it because it is in a secure research environment. You know, we have uh, approval from IRMA, you know, to, to conduct the experiment in a containment facility, and it is all about uh, basic research, um, you know, determining whether we can get expression of that uh, uh, human protein in the milk of livestock. That is the first step. Um, so um, uh, I see it as um, you know, very exciting. The risks are so unknown, and in fact, in many ways I think the risks are unknowable. We're, we're moving into a territory that is so new that how can we even do the, the work of evaluating what the risks are? We, we don't even know. We, we don't have a clue. We couldn't possibly have a clue. A police investigation is underway after a crop of genetically engineered potatoes was destroyed near Christchurch. A potato field uprooted. Nandor Tansos traces back the origins of the anti-GE campaign to the attack on the Christchurch GM potato crop. The Greens are calling for... It hit the headlines in a massive way. Um, and for the first time it was really, it was on the front page of the papers, it was on the news, it was on the current affairs programs. And it was really the first time that a lot of people in the public had even heard of the issue. And once they heard about it, they were like, whoa, what's going on? He's in his mid-30s, a committed Rastafarian, a radical environmental activist, and a member of New Zealand's parliament. With skateboard skills which none of his fellow parliamentarians can match, he's captured public attention and strong support from young disaffected voters. I give greetings to each and every one in the name of the Creator, the Most High, Jah Rastafari. He's managed to create quite a stir in Wellington's parliamentary chamber and he attributes his political success to his fight to keep New Zealand GE free. The Greens embracing success. Welcome, congratulations. This is the first time all six Greens have met as MPs. The During the 1999 election, the Greens adopted the anti-GE message as their campaign mantra, and the voters rewarded their efforts delivering them six seats and the balance of power in Parliament. A frustrating result for Helen Clark's new Labour government. Certainly a lot of Green Party support in the election came from the GE issue because we were the only political party that was prepared to stand up and, and, and even speak on the issue. Um, we had other political parties were either totally in support of big business and, and that, that whole thing or were wavering, they weren't sure what to do. But the Green Party was the only party that was prepared to stand up and say, we don't think this is right, and we demand that the people of this country have a say. I'm absolutely furious that we have to campaign for the right to know what we're eating. It's a fundamental human right. The drama isn't to just confined to politics. To be able to make the choices. there's been a big rise in direct action against genetic engineering. In just a few years, at least a dozen radical action groups have been established. Today, in an Auckland supermarket, activists are targeting groceries, relabeling chickens, biscuits and margarine with special stickers warning customers that their dinner may be genetically modified. No one here seems to find this at all unusual. Teagle chicken, this is one of their key issues, is uh, animal feed. Um, teagle are the biggest importer of genetically engineered uh, soy into New Zealand. The poultry is a classic target for GE feeds and stuff. Yeah. Let's move on, there's a few people watching it. 
consumers are ringing out and saying, hey, I don't want to be eating GE food, I don't want my kids eating GE food. And that's what it all comes back to. There's been no long-term health testing of the effects of GE foods on humans or animals, so uh, we're back to the old guinea pigs in, in the experiment as to what the effects of GE are. As direct action goes, perhaps it seems a little tame. Other activists have chosen a more violent approach. Uh, we've had uh, one of our staff members' houses, uh, they had acid poured over their car, their private car in their own drive um, way at home. Um, pretty uh, adverse slogans um, painted on the um, fence in their private property. Whilst I was in Scotland, um, the Animal Liberation Front uh, firebombed uh, the laboratories uh, that uh, um, were just down the corridor from the one that I was working in. So I guess in the UK I've been previously exposed to that type of activism. But basically they've denied all our information on under about 10 different sections of the Official Information Act. So basically they're just, they're just stalling. They don't want to give us any information. Mark Eden is one of the old guard of animal liberationists. For some years, he's been waging a paper war with the country's biotech research companies, struggling to learn more about the exact nature of their genetic experiments on animals. There's laboratories in Otago, Wellington, uh, Hamilton and Auckland, all using genetically modified animals in experiments and it's very hard to find out what they're actually doing. Um, we have to, to find out about one experiment. We have to do months and months of paperwork just to get a tiny little bit out. And it's only when people start asking questions and now they're kind of coming out with these lies, like claiming, oh no, we're actually trying to cure all these horrible diseases at our Agricultural Meat Research Institute, you know, which is total rubbish. So um, the deception, like, it's very hard to get the info out and they just straight out lie and they will do anything they can to prevent us from getting any information. There is competition globally um, in these areas and um, I would uh, suggest that AgriSearch is amongst one of the leading groups um, in that area and it's our um, determination to keep at that um, leading edge. The birth of Dolly thrust British company PPL Therapeutics to the leading edge of biotechnology. PPL had backed the Scottish cloning research and earlier this year announced to London financial markets that it was building the world's first medical milk farm, not from cows, but sheep in New Zealand. Its plan is remarkably similar to that of AgriSearch. But Unlike AgriSearch's cloned cow project, PPL's plans are well advanced and the subject of far less public scrutiny. In the shadow of a remote hydroelectric grid near the source of the Waikato River, sheep graze peacefully on PPL's transgenic farm. Nearly 4,000 of them contain human genes. Within 12 months, PPL hopes to have close to 10,000 transgenic sheep on its high-tech, high-security farm, enabling it to extract massive quantities of protein. Like AgriSearch, it's banking its claims on the theory that the extracted protein could provide relief for sufferers of hereditary emphysema or cystic fibrosis. Curiously enough, the human component of PPL's transgenic farm had its origins many years ago on the other side of the world. Copenhagen in the mid-80s. At around this time, a young Danish woman, we don't know her name, 
agreed to donate a blood sample at a medical clinic. The woman who gave that blood sample could hardly have imagined the bizarre experiment nearly two decades on in which her genes would be used. Her stored DNA transported more than halfway across the world and injected into these sheep. Even now that this transgenic farm is reaching the capacity for full commercial production, she's never been informed. Transgenics is a hit and miss business. For all the healthy sheep on this farm, we've been told of an unusually high number of miscarriages, dead sheep, and those born with genetic weaknesses. But PPL wastes no time disposing of its transgenic mistakes. They've imported a second-hand pet crematorium from Australia to do the job on site and in quarantine. The company maintains that its research efforts are safe and pose no long-term risk to people or the environment. But for many New Zealanders, there is more at stake than just public health. There's a debate that has the potential to disrupt our lineage, our genealogy. It's a debate that has the potential um, to impact on our cultural practices. Um, it's a debate that totally uh, rejects our way of knowing or Māori way of science and understanding the natural world. So it's hugely important, hugely important. Māori rights activist and expert on Indigenous resources, Jessica Hutchins, believes that Māori people and their lands are seriously threatened by New Zealand's biotech industries meddling with DNA. You know, people might say, well, but they're not, uh, they're not modifying human beings, they're not modifying Māori people, but um, you're modifying things within our environment and we're connected to that, we whakapapa into that through genealogy. So it's all related, you know, you can't so, well, you know, we're doing uh, genetic modification on cows and, you know, they're not traditional species, but you're doing it on ancestral land. If things go horribly wrong with New Zealand's genetic experimentation, then this organisation will bear the blame, if not the consequences. Our legislation makes the authority, IRMA, um, the decision maker, in which no one can appeal a decision by the authority. And I have to say that's unusual, that's, that's very strong legislation and it puts a lot of power in the hands of the authority. The Environmental Risk Management Authority is one of the first departments of its type in the world, established to monitor the boundaries of science and industry to provide a framework and ultimate control over New Zealand's gene splicing scientists. Uh, I don't think I would have predicted the amount of public debate and controversy that we've created. Uh, so I think that was a surprise. But in, in a sense it was beginning to happen when the authority was set up. So we weren't surprised when it began to happen. It's just that it's grown and snowballed to a greater extent than we thought would be the case. Two, four, six, eight. We don't want to use two, Earlier this year, Irma found itself being challenged in the courts Opponents of AgResearch's transgenic cow plans asked the High Court to overrule Irma and stop the experiment. The High Court decided that Irma had in fact made errors of law in allowing the experiment to proceed and they set aside the original approval. AgResearch and its transgenic progeny were now facing a new threat. By the time these calves are born, they will be illegal genetically modified organisms and under the law in New Zealand they cannot be allowed to live if they are illegal organisms. What I've been saying today... Amid the rush of emotions and calls for the heavily pregnant cows to be killed, the High Court left a solid escape route. The task that we then had to tackle was, if you like, to reconsider the application, this time being much more careful to follow the, the decision-making methodology. Uh, that was done, and the result of doing that was to re-approve the application. 
For those who had appealed against the Irma approval, the High Court's judgment represented little more than a rap on the knuckles for Irma, rather than any victory against GE scientists. One of the crucial questions for me was, has the human donor actually given permission for their, their DNA or the copy of their DNA to be used for this type of experiment? Because for us, it, you know, it has the potential to cause a spiritual imbalance. On the banks of the Waikato River in Hamilton, the local Wairere people have been replanting native trees which they use in traditional medicine. Alarmed by the AgriSearch plan to clone animals containing human DNA on their traditional land, local Wairere elders called on Jackie Amahanga to help them take on the scientists. The problem that I had with that is that we were dealing with genetically modified materials that we didn't know what type of bacteria or viruses could be created as a result of, uh, you know, the scientific research. And so I was pretty concerned about um, them reaching into the underground water table and the underground water table feeds into the Waikato River where we get our drinking water. But despite local Maori objections, Irma judged the ag research experiment as safe and not likely to pose any risk of contamination. Being within Hamilton's city boundaries, the ag research scientists had to carefully consider how to dispose of their transgenic mistakes and their dead cows. Like the PPL transgenic sheep farm further south, Scientists had also planned to cremate the remains, but the Wairere people said no. They had a human DNA component with it, and for us, it's like eating the tupapaku or the deceased remains of a human by the mere fact that the particulate has been discharged to air in a residential area um, where people in that residential area can breathe it in. So it's like eating those deceased pe people. The view that's been taken by some Māori, at any rate, has been that they simply don't like the technology at all. They, they object on spiritual grounds to the whole notion of genetic modification. Uh, now that makes decision making extraordinarily difficult because you're dealing with uh, very strongly held views which can't really be reconciled. Three new controversial calves are under tight security at Waikato's Ruakura Research Centre. They've just been born to parents who won a permanent stay of execution last month. Few recent human births in New Zealand have provoked as much interest as the birth of this trio. It took 48 miscarriages before scientists finally produced these cloned Frisian calves with human genes. According to the Irma rules, they'll live out their entire life on the clone farm, but they won't be alone for long. AgriSearch is already busy creating hundreds of new clones just like them. Opponents of the clone farm are concerned that the experiment is simply a pretext for creating designer milks and dairy products. At Victoria University in Wellington, the anti-GE roadshow has been gathering pace as the Royal Commission on Genetic Modification prepares its findings. These enthusiastic young campaigners are hoping that public pressure will eventually force out the gene-fusing scientists. Just down the hill from the university in New Zealand's Parliament building, the mood is more reserved. Most political analysts here are certain that in the short term, the scientists will win, with the Royal Commission likely to favour a continuation of New Zealand's foray into the genetic unknown. That's likely to relieve many of the big biotech companies and foreign governments. 
But those opposed to the experiments have warned the biotech industry that such a result will lead to a rise in anti-GE sabotage and other direct action. The Royal Commission is going to bring its, um, announce its results to the public. And I don't think people are going to be happy. I mean, people really haven't got any faith that the Royal Commission is going to come out and say, well, we're going to stop GE. They're not. I mean, it would be good if they were, but they're not. So people are going to have to stop it themselves. And I think we'll see a big increase in direct action. Um, crops will be sabotaged. Um, and, and laboratories where the animals are um, need to lose money. For me, the reality is if there are no legitimate channels, then people are going to take illegal action because it's the only, the only thing available to them. People must have a voice and they will, if they're not given a voice, they'll take it. And I support that because for me, the right of people to participate in what's going on in their country is, is uh, paramount.